Hi folks, this is a video that's going to compare two types of compressors. They're, uh, they're similar but they have some fundamental differences. One is a uh, high-end residential grade and the other one is a industrial and industrial grade. So the very first one I'll show you is a Coleman, uh, Coleman uh, Powermate they call it. Uh, there's like 10 or 20 different brands of these things. They're all the same. The motors are the same, the pump and the tank. It's all the, they're all the same. Any common uh, residential grade store would sell this 60 gallon upright compressor and uh, I, I consider it like a high-end residential grade um, you don't need something this big unless you're painting or doing a lot of mechanic work or or uh, well, I don't know doing something that needs a fair amount of air uh, air nailers that a lot of people use and pumping up tires you do not need something with a 60 gallon tank but anyway uh, I bought this unit and uh, it works off a single 20 amp 220 breaker and uh, that is more than enough power to supply this motor. They call this a seven horsepower peak, um, which is really a marketing thing. You can't get seven horsepower out of a 20 amp breaker. And uh, so it's it really, this is probably a two horsepower motor, I'm guessing, but uh, they call it a seven peak. Anyway, so to give you a sense of the size of the motor, uh, you know, there's my hand on it, and uh, it's that big. Okay, next is the pump and this is a two cylinder oil lubricated pump it's uh, it's got a, a crankcase oil goes in there and drains out there it's important to change the oil oh, every year or so depending on how much you use it and uh, this two cylinder pump both the cylinders are the same diameter so each cylinder takes air in from the intake through that felt felty kind of filter there and uh, pumps it up to oh well as much as it can 100 60 psi probably, and then uh, pushes it at the top through this line into the top of the tank. And uh, this little gizmo here is the pressure sensor, and it cuts in and cuts out the electric motor based on the pressure that's in the tank and what it's been set to. And here's a pressure gauge. Uh, this device comes from the factory. I think they say, yeah, the working pressure is 100 to 130 psi. That wasn't really sufficient for my needs. I wanted it a bit higher. So I took this cover off and uh, there's a, an adjustment screw that uh, controls the pressure regulator. And it's actually, it's a Torx. Uh, the screw head is a female Torx. Uh, like the set or the, the type of screw is a Torx setting or Torx screw. But the, there's a, a dimple in the center of that kind of female Torx thing. So you need what's called a safety Torx or a security Torx bit. So it looks like a male Torx bit, but if you look at the bit, there's actually a hole in it and it fits in. Anyway, I didn't have one of those, so I took a pair of pliers on the screw head and adjusted it. And uh, you don't want to go crazy. I mean, this thing's meant to cut out at 130 psi. Um, I ratcheted mine up to cut out at about 145 to 150 psi, and uh, that uh, did the job for me. And by doing so, I seem to move the cut in pressure up as well from 100 to 108 psi, which is just great. That's what I wanted. The next, uh, the next thing I'll tell you about this guy is uh, the weight of this machine is about 300 pounds. Sorry for, sorry for the door opener there. The weight of this machine is about 300 pounds, and uh, I lifted it on like one end off of the truck and put it, uh, put it on the ground, and then lifted the pump end up and stood it up vertical by myself, so it was no problem. There's a uh, half inch uh, fitting here, half inch pipe trick fitting, and I have a water separator and a pressure, re uh, pressure regulator there as well. One note about uh, hooking up fittings to an air compressor, don't buy cheap steel fittings. They're, they're, they're great for water, apparently, but for air, apparently air will leak when water won't leak, so I've gone through this already with these regular cast iron fittings, Spent my money on that. They were cheaper, and they leaked. And then I put tape, Teflon tape on them. Even with that, it leaked. We tried pipe dope, and it leaked too. And uh, so, just spend the extra two bucks on each of the fittings and get brass fittings. Sorry about the door again. And uh, get brass fittings. And if you Teflon tape them, I actually pipe put pipe dope on them. Teflon taped over there and pipe dope again. And that's been several years and they haven't leaked at all so really quite nice there's a drain on the bottom of these tanks to uh, turn to help you drain the water out every so often so that's all there is to the Coleman uh, power mate 
new, they're about 700 bucks plus tax. Okay, next one is this uh, industrial grade RK machinery compressor. It's a Canadian made unit, uh, or a Canadian company at least, I don't know where it's made. And uh, this, is a, this is definitely uh, a step up. It's got an 80 gallon tank. Uh, it's working pressure, it cuts out at 175 PSI. That's what it's set to from the factory. And uh, the electric motor is a beast of a motor. Uh, again, here's my hand on the, the smaller one. Here's my hand on this big one. It is, it is absolutely enormous. It probably weighs about 80 pounds or 100 pounds just for the motor. So that motor is a uh, much higher current draw. It needs to be placed on a 30 amp 220 breaker. And uh, unlike this lighter grade one where you can turn it on and off with this switch, it's just a right basic electrical switch, this one draws so much current that if you had a switch like that, it would burn the contacts of the switch. So instead of that, you need to have a magnetic starter, which I have installed in this very large, unnecessarily large box right here, but it's what came with it. The magnetic starter is also known as a contactor, and uh, a contactor will allow you to switch on and off a high current draw device without burning the contacts. So there's my, there's my uh, magnetic starter in that box and I have a remote switch wired so that uh, near my entryway to my house, between the house and the garage, I have a light switch. Well, my light switches are the yellow ones on the bottom and my air compressor is the black switch on top. Okay, so uh, this pump right here is uh, what's called a two-stage pump. It's actually a four-cylinder pump. A lot of these V-looking v pumps or V-shaped pumps are actually just twin cylinders, but this is a four-cylinder. And uh, two of the cylinders, one in each bank, is a larger diameter cylinder, and it pumps the air pressure up to like 65 PSI, I think. And uh, then it dumps that 65 PSI air over to the smaller cylinder in each of these banks, which pumps it up to like 175, no, maybe more than that, probably like 200 PSI. And uh, then, it, then it dumps it into this pipe, which goes into the tank. Same as the other unit. This one has a pressure sensor that cuts in and cuts out the electric motor, depending on the pressure in the tank. And uh, when I got this unit, it had a bad gauge. And so when I plug it in, it took a long time to pump the tank all the way up and then cut out, like, I don't know, seven minutes or so. And uh, I called the factory, and they were extremely helpful, by the way. RK, I've, I am very impressed with their customer service. I bought this unit used, and they still uh, spent all kinds of time helping me with it. And uh, anyway, when I called RK, they said the pump-up pump up time from 0 to 175 PSI is about 5 minutes and 45 seconds. And uh, they said, oh, if you're around there, you know, that's, that's fine. And uh, so I was curious to know if the pump, what, what the condition of the pump was. So I did that test, and it took me, I don't know, 8 minutes maybe for it to cut out, quite a long time. And so uh, only after I got the, ga the new gauge, did I realize that the pressure cutout was set for 195 PSI, which is quite a bit. So I backed it off to 165, which is what I wanted. Uh, from the factory, it came set to 175, and it's, uh, it's within, it's, it takes a little longer than uh, five minutes and 40 seconds, RK suggests that it should, uh, but well within reason, like maybe 30 seconds longer. So um, that's the, uh, that's a story on my new gauge. What else do I want to tell you? When I got it, one of these safety, uh, it's got four safety pressure relief valves. One right here in the tank, um, one there, right up there. It's a high pressure one. And then these two low pressure ones on each bank, the banks of the cylinders. And uh, one of these was blowing prematurely. So before the tank would, or before the compressor would cut out, it was, uh, it was blowing one of these. And, um, so I switched it. I took one from one side and put it to the other bank, and the problem followed the safety valve. It was not a problem with one of the banks of cylinders. So I know it was the valve and not the actual compressor, and I've ordered a new one. They're like 12 bucks on the Internet. Uh, looking back, I had uh, ordered that and done that test before I put the new gauge on, so maybe there was nothing wrong with the safety valve at all, and uh, it was just because the, the um, pressure uh, cutout was set so high that the safety valve was actually doing its job. I don't know. And maybe one of them was slightly weaker than the other, and that's why, uh, that's why it tripped. In either case, 12 bucks will get me a new one. 
So, next thing I'll tell you is uh, this guy has air filters and they look like little car air filters. They're circular, cardboard, and uh, with the metal grating around them. And they look really, in fact, they were quite dirty when I, when I got this machine. So I took them apart, took them out, blew, them, blew all the dust out of them, and I couldn't see any light through them. And I thought, well, should I replace them or, or not? So I did a, uh, a pump-up test with the filters in place. And then I uh, drained the tank again and did a, the same pump-up test again with the filters removed. And uh, I was just kind of, kind of curious to see what the difference was. Um, over, over several minutes, it was only about 20 seconds difference. So that told me that uh, with the filters installed, it takes about 20 seconds more to pump the tank up. Percentage-wise or uh, effort uh, for the pump, really there's not much more effort on the pump due to the filters being in place. That means they're free-flowing, so I left them there, even though they, they physically look a bit dirty. Uh, maybe someday I'll change them, but for now they're okay. Next thing you want to do is make sure you change the oil on these things. and. Uh, Unlike a, a car uh, where there's a lot of carbon being burnt in the combustion chamber, these, the, the oil in these wears out even before it looks dirty. So you should change it even if the sight glass looks clean. This one had not been changed in a while and uh, it was pretty dirty when I took it out. Um, giving you some more comparison data, this, uh, this guy right here is like, like 300 pounds. This industrial compressor is about 700 pounds. And uh, as far as performance goes, this one's rated at 90 PSI at 10 CFM. So if you're running a tool that uses 90 PSI, it'll, it, this compressor will generate 10 CFM continuously. This guy, on the other hand, it will generate 20 CFM, so twice as much volume of air, at 175 PSI. So this compressor really is capable of, of at least four times the air volume that uh, that, that guy is. A um, little difference of price, that's 700 bucks. New, this RK compressor, yeah, right down the road for me, is $3,400 after tax. And uh, so there's quite a difference there. I bought this second hand and could not have afforded that price, but uh, anyway, just for comparison. Um, trying to think of what else that I might, uh, might want to tell you. I think that's it for now. So uh, good luck with your compressors, and now you know the difference between two-stage, single-stage, residential, and commercial-grade compressors.